now that the 2024 NFL schedule has gotten its much deserved deep dive, it's time to look at this roster, rank the position groups. Let's get it. You are locked on Cardinals, your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. Cardinals Alex Clancy here. Follow me on Twitter, Clancy's Corner underscore. Follow the podcast, Locked On AZ Cards. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We've talked a lot about the uh, the schedule and ups, downs, question marks, everything in between. And, you know, it's just... We don't know yet. It's so early. We haven't even gotten to camp. And the crazy part is, though, we're like three and a half months from uh, the Hall of Fame game, I think, right around there. So it's closer than, you know, it gets here fast. I feel like the off seasons have never felt shorter. Like last off season, I know the Cardinals did a lot. You know, they fired the last regime. They brought in the new one, Kyler Murray. Buda Baker requesting a trade, you know, uh, what's the future of this organization going to be like? The, uh, you know, the organization uh, grades, the report card that the Cardinals failed. Um, and now you're looking at it just under a completely different lens. After last season, which was a lot more fun, a lot more, uh, I don't know, rewarding, I think is the right word for everybody involved. Like, it's different now. As I said, it would be, it's different now. And I, I don't think that's some, some huge proclamation that I was right about. I mean, it's different. It felt different from the jump. It felt different from week one in Washington. So what needed to happen was a massive infusion of talent. And while some saw this offseason as playing safe and not going for it when they could have, and prolonging this rebuild, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I've implored people to think and understand that boring wins. It doesn't have to be splash signings in an effort to make the Cardinals better. And I'll tell you what, the Cardinals are also going to be better no matter what. It was a bad roster last year. They could have won seven games. Easily. Well, they should have won six, like legitimately should have won six, Seattle in week 18 and the Giants. They should have won both of those games. And there were other games that they were super close. They could have won. They could have beat Washington. So looking at it under that lens where it's like, okay, there's a four-win team. Matt Prater missed that, missed those two field goals. They were able to draft Marvin Harrison Jr. Good. So that team now has more talent, albeit young, young, young talent, you know, out of the draft and second year guys. And now it's time to giddy up. So I can understand that. Where the over under six and a half, I said in yesterday's show, that's about right. The schedule is tough. Um, I'm getting some blowback like, well, everybody's schedule is tough. It's like, okay, what do you, what do you want me to do here? What am I supposed to do with that? How am I supposed to defend somebody saying that? That's like, John Mulaney has a great joke, and every day as you'll know this, because uh, I, I say it a bunch on here, it's like, it's a great joke where it's like, you're that kind of person that says, you know, when somebody says, oh man, it, it tonight's been fun, and it's like 2 a.m., they're like, don't you mean tomorrow? It's like, shut up. Shut up. Stop it. Every schedule is tough. Stop. The Cardinals have a very difficult schedule, and... If they can replicate their performance last year, they take exactly what happened last year with their play and did that same thing in 2024 with the talent that they have now. If they had this team last year, they would have won 10 games. Let's put it that way. So yes, to the person who, you know, constantly says on Twitter about that, that um, everybody's schedule is tough. It's like, okay. The Cardinals are more equipped to deal with adversity now. That's the bottom line. So when you look at the roster overview, which is what today's show is going to be, it's 
there's a lot of question marks. And again, as I said yesterday, question marks don't mean bad. Question marks mean don't know yet. Oh, that could be a question mark. It could be taken in with poor connotation, with a bad connotation. Not in this instance. We just don't know. Rookies haven't played yet. We just don't know. Justin Jones and Ball Nichols haven't been in this system yet. Sean Murphy Bunting hasn't been in the system yet. Jonah Williams hasn't been in the system yet. But with that, you look at the roster now, and even though there's a lot of rookies, predominantly rookies in this in this you know specific case where they're going to be playing meaningful snaps with expectation. But the difference is they're equipped to do that. They're not a fourth round corner out of Florida who threw his sh threw an opponent's shoe, and that's what he's known for in college that Steve kind of traded up to get and just threw into the CB2 role as a rookie when he had no business being there. This is different. Monty Osborne and Jonathan Gannon drafted to fit their scheme and their expectations for what human beings should be like on and off the field. This is so much deeper than, oh, Monty Osborne just wanted an extra third round pick, so he traded back eight spots. And he pat and he was and he gave up on Cooper DeGene and, and Kool-Aid McKinstry. It's bigger than that. And Kamari Lassiter. It's bigger than that. They saw Max Melton as their guy. They thought they could get him at 43, and they did. So the overview as such is the most balanced roster we've seen in a very long time for the Cardinals. And this a lot of this is future pacing. I know. But the balanced nature of the roster, far removed are the days of. Chandler Jones, Patrick Peterson, quarterback, Larry Fitzgerald. That's what the that's where the elite players were. And then everything else was hmm. All the other players, hmm. Offensive line not great. Pass runs not great. Corners not great. Safety's all right. Run game's okay. You know, it, it's it's not that anymore. It's you've got your veteran studs that are the pillars. I've called them pillars. Since day one on this podcast, your pillars, your studs in the foundation, if I can do that. Studs, no. In the formulation of a house. Let's call it that way. I'm starting to build the house. I don't know how much longer I'm going to do that uh, metaphor. You've got your guys. And then you've got your veteran backup players who start backup, meaning not guys you rely upon to make meaningful plays every snap, but you've got guys who are the backup dancers, as I call them, you know, the, the backup vocalists for your young studs, young ballers who got drafted, you know, last year and this year. That's, that's legitimately and literally what a balanced roster looks like. And the Cardinals have that. They have that. Are the rookies going to pan out? We don't know. Is this the best situation that we've seen a rookie class be in for these last two years in a long time? Of course. And it's not even close. The Cardinals had a bevy of needs starting at the beginning of last year, and they filled them all. Will they pan out through the draft picks? We don't know. But at least it was a there were two off seasons and two drafts that were with intention to change the makeup of a very thin roster that was put together by toothpicks and super glue by GM who couldn't draft. That's the difference with this roster and the ones in years past, you know, last year and this year, pretty much. So what are the best position groups, the strongest? What are the weakest? Let's discuss. Well, let's do it. What are we waiting for guys and gals? Thanks for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. The best position groups next. Locked On Cardinals, your team, yours every day. This episode of Locked On Cardinals is brought to you by the Game Time app. Okay, so I don't know if you know this. <laughs> this the new schedule is out for the NFL. I don't know. Did you, 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 cool. The Cardinals have some. Can I say badass? Am I allowed to say that? Um, games at home this year. They've got some, can I say, badass road games this year. 
So if you're looking to go to State Farm Stadium, if you want to travel around the world, go to a couple games on the road, the Game Time app has you covered regardless. It takes the guess out of buying tickets. They've got last minute deals. So you say up to 60% off buying last minute for sports and that, you know, concerts, comedy, theater, whatever it is, it's not just football. Um, you know, say you want to go to Lambo, buy some tickets. Say you want to go to State Farm Stadium to see Aaron Rodgers. You can do it. You want to see Jared Goff and the, the just the rampage Detroit Lions that are over there now? You can do it. And the best part about the game time app, aside from being able to buy tickets with to everywhere, is they let you see the vantage point of the seats before you buy them. So you don't have to guess on what your vantage point will look like. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account. Use code Locked On NFL for twenty bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code L O C K E D O N N F L for twenty bucks off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Alex Nancy, Locked On Cardinals. Um, you know. This is a situation where you just hope 80% of it works. You just hope 80% of it works. You hope that Paris Johnson Jr. takes that next step. You hope Jonah Williams is a plug-and-play guy on the left or right, depending on where they play. I think they're going to go into camp and figure it out, which is a great problem to have. It's not even a problem. They've got options. Is Elijah Wilkerson going to start at left guard? Are they going to pop in Isaiah? Um, are they going to pop in uh, – why am I – Why am I? what is going on here? Are they going to pop in the left guard that they – Isaiah Adams. God, why could I not? I was going to say Isaiah Thomas. That's not right. Are they going to pop in Isaiah Adams at left guard who's wearing DJ Humphrey's old 74? You know, like, is is Trey Benson going to get 40% of the touches? Are they going to start it right out the gate? They, is, is he going to have a good enough camp and, and preseason to be able to get thrust in right away? I don't know, but what we do know is there are – distinct differences between talent levels in different position groups still. You can't change the face and guts of an organization in two off seasons. Like, and th this isn't an excuse, okay? This is a reason. The Cardinals were in a bad way, way worse than what 2022 looked like. Way worse. They had no plan for the future. There was no infrastructure. There was no compound interest on their investment, which is just the team as a whole. Like there was no plan to overlap when guys got older with guys who were ready to take their spot, like normal organizations have. And it's not perfect. Okay. But you're starting to see with last draft in this one, you're starting to see that. Okay. You're starting to see it. And it shows with the strongest position groups. And this isn't in any particular order because I think it's splitting hairs. And there's different position groups have way more players are going to be on the field at any given time than others. So the best position groups, I'm taking quarterback out of it. We're not going to have a Kyler Murray conversation today. The best position groups for me in no particular order. One easy one, tight end. Okay. Trey McBride may take that leap into top three tight end territory. This is a perfect offense. He's a great run and pass blocking tight end. He's got Tip Raymond with him. He's got Huggy Bear Isaiah Hig uh, uh, Hig Higgins um, that that will you know be played back up for him. And then you know it's it's something that it's something that is necessary for a tight end to thrive. Okay, and while he probably would have thrived anywhere he went, you know like. Long are the days of, you know, the Austin Hoopers and, and Jimmy Grahams and guys that were in a good situation for a second, went somewhere else, and then, you know, it was fine. Jimmy Graham was still fine in Seattle, uh, but he was never what he was in New Orleans because that fit exactly what his skill set was. Jimmy Graham was not a blocking tight end. Um, Travis Kelsey had, you know, Patrick Mahomes. He was fine, and then he had Patrick Mahomes, and he was elite. George Kittle's been great. He's, you know, the comp to, to Trey McBride, but – George Kittle has stretches of not putting up the numbers. Like, he's not putting up 100 yards a week. Him and Brock Purdy have a fantastic relationship. So, you know, his numbers have been a lot better the last couple of years. But, you know, I think Trey McBride is going to be a guy who's consistently between 70 and 100 yards 
a week. He's a huge guy, and I think that that tight end group, obviously, position of strength. Um, running back room, uh, James Conner has been the most important offensive player for the Arizona Cardinals since he's come over. Yes, the offense ran through him two years, ran him into the ground in 2021. Like I've been screaming from the mountaintops. He should only be touching the ball 65% of the time, 60, 65% of the time. If you want him for, for 17 weeks for 17 games, hopefully with Trey Benson now out of Florida state and Michael Carter and DJ Dallas and Amari DeMarcado, they've got five guys, man. This running back room is going to be insane. It is going to be injury proof. You hope. DJ Dallas played meaningful snaps, a bunch of them. From you know, you know, it spot starts because you know Seattle running backs can never stay healthy. Amari DeMarcado looked fine when he played a more prominent role last year. Michael Carter has got some bursts, like they've got options in the backfield. Position of strength. Offensive line, position of strength. This isn't even neutral anymore. It's position of strength. Because like Monty Osford did the year before, he started the wheels in motion. He did this year. He's drafting for need with guys who can actually play day one. And Monty Osford, both, both, Isaiah Adams and Christian Jones were looked at on multiple boards as steals. Christian Jones out of Texas, Isaiah Adams at Illinois, like left guard, and you've got a guy to back up. You've got a guy to back up. Um, Paris Johnson Jr. in case of injury. They've got depth on the offensive line. Shelty Frold has been a vision compared to what was going on at the center position after Rodney Hudson decided to retire and then came back and then played 15 minutes and then was out the rest of the year. He was great last year. You don't need to be Creed Humphrey. You don't need to be Jeff Saturday or Jason Kelsey to be a great center. You need to keep the pocket deep for your quarterback. You need to give your running back lanes if you were to run up the gut. And Jaldi Frohl did that last year. Will Hernandez, since coming over, has been great. And again, you don't have to be an all-pro right guard to be great. For the Cardinals, he's been great. And Paris Johnson Jr. was good last year. The right side was good. Now you add a veteran left tackle or right tackle, whatever it's going to be. Elijah Wilkerson, I'm assuming won't be the le- won't be this opening day starter week one. I just don't. I can't see it. He had a tough year last year. So if you have, if you have Isaiah Adams start at left guard, he's going to have plenty of veteran help on the left side. If I if Jonah Williams starts at left tackle to be able to help him ease in to the NFL game, that's how rookies are supposed to be supported their first season with veterans surrounding them, and quite literally on the offensive line, that's what it would be. It's not just in the film room and things like that with you know wide receivers and, and corners and safeties, things like that. Quite literally, he would be sandwiched between two seasoned veterans in the NFL if he were to start at left guard. Position of strength. Safety. Position of strength. And I don't understand why people are knocking Buda Baker still. I don't understand. Okay? What Buda Baker can do for the rest of his career if he chooses to stay with Arizona, is be a compliment. He doesn't have to be the Buda Baker of 2019, of 2020, of 2021, of 2022, when the cornerback rooms were awful. They've been awful forever. And yes, even if you have Patrick Peterson at Pro Bowl level, that's it. They haven't had a CB2 since Antonio Cromartie in 2014. They haven't had corners at all. And Buda Biggers had to make up for a lack of pass rush, a lack of cornerback play, a lack of linebacker play. He's been on an island by himself, and people never gave him credit for it. So now he can take a step back. Look at what Teron Matthews is doing in New Orleans. Look at what he did in Kansas City. Yes, he's a game wrecker, but he's not at the absolute elite level that he was five or six years ago. He didn't have to be. They've got a good defense. And when you add him with Jalen Thompson, who's still in his prime, and they – and they um, they drafted uh, Dadrian Taylor Demerson, Rabbit. Position of strength: three guys who like to hit the hell out of hit the hell out of offensive players. 
ball hawking, great in the open field tackling. Sure, Boone State Boone Baker's lost a bit of a step, but he's still the most important defensive player the Cardinals have. He's the leader of the defense. So for shame, people saying they got to get rid of Boone Baker. I don't get it. It's called loyalty. What the hell are we doing here? And I think that's it for positions of strength. Oh, excuse me, special teams. Got to give it up. Blake Gillikin and Matt Prater, got to give it up. I was wrong about Blake Gillikin. I said something during the offseason. Was it this offseason? Yeah, it was this offseason. When Tommy Townsend was cut, I'm like, they got to sign it. Like, that would be a perfect chef's kiss to put in place with Matt Prater. Matt Prater still has at least another year, you would think. So you got to give um, you got to give the flowers to the special teamers also, kicker and punter. Uh, Alex Lancey, Locked on Cardinals, worst position groups. Next, Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by FanDuel. It's winner-take-all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. The question is, Like, the biggest question for me is, do you trust Boston? Do you trust them? Go to FanDuel. They're top three in odds to win it. Do you trust them? Either way, right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150. To bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sportsman. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by the Game Time app. I told you, I talked about them earlier today. Thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen. Free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team. Every day, as I mentioned, today's episode is brought to you by the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On NFL for twenty bucks off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Best position groups: running back, tight end, offensive line, safety. Now, before I get into the worst position groups, the weakest position groups, there's one that is neutral to me and that's the wide receiver group we don't know and i listen it's a hell of a step up from last year and you know separating trey mcbride from the wide receivers is kind of a fool's errand uh usually because i just call them pass catchers but i think for this exercise specifically you had to separate them so tbd on the wide receiver we don't know we don't know greg dorch when play, when getting opportunities has been great. Michael Wilson wasn't healthy for the majority of the season last year, showed flashes in preseason and the regular season, like where it's like, oh man, if we see more of that and he's on the field more, could be an absolute steal out of the third round from, from two years ago's draft or two drafts ago. And Marvin Harris Jr. hasn't played in the NFL yet. So we don't know. Zay Jones' addition is a good addition. He'll be that shrubbery that I say where the roses are the, are the young players, just like Blal Nichols and Justin Jones are. Um, it, it's I'm punting on it. Okay. I'm punting on it. We can do a deep, we'll definitely do a deeper dive uh, into the wide receiver room throughout this off season. Definitely. I just, I don't think, I don't know what the expectations are. I mean, I'm assuming Marvin Harris Jr. will have, at least a thousand yards receiving, which in 17 weeks isn't a whole lot. It's like 65 yards. Let's, you know what? This is why you come to Lockdown Cardinals. Holding. Yeah, it's 58 yards a game. So thousand yard receiver that people say is this, you know, incredible thing. It's, it's not, I mean, it's good for, you know, when it comes to escalators or elevators and in, in, uh, in contracts, Things like that, thousand yard season, sure. It's that benchmark, but there's a lot more sexy when it was 16 games or 14 games, but 17 games. I feel like we gotta 
We got a level of our. Oh, another thing. I'm just going to go on a little tangent here. Thank you, Locked On Cardinals um, fans and uh, everydayers. Can we turn top tens into top twenties now? Like the top ten players of all time, every year goes by. There's more players to discuss. You can't just do top ten. What are we doing here? Like top ten should have ended in like 2000. Then you move it to top 20. It's like, you know, the long football's been happening. You know, long basketball's been happening. Baseball's been happening for you. Can't cram more than 10 people into a top 10. Pro tip make it top 20, just like 1,000 yard receiving. Make it 1,200 yards. Make it 1,500, 1,500 yards is tough. But this is what people think it is 1,000 yards receiving. Oh, that's 100 yards a game. That's just like an irrational thought that everybody thinks. Everybody's, you know, joint irrationality at work. So, you know, with Marvin Harris, you sorry, that was just a, that was kind of a squirrel situation. But I told you, you're going to get the real me here. I squirrel from time to time. So Marvin Harris, you're 1,000 yards. I feel like that would be a solid rookie season. Eight touchdowns, seven, eight touchdowns. He's going to get a lot of work. He's going to get a lot of work on the red zone. Um, I think this, this is what I think for him, at, at least for 2024, is receptions, target share. Percentage of contested throws caught, things like that. I don't really yardage is fine, but I think receptions, unless it's like you know the Rondo Moore six catches for eight yards, barring any sort of random thing like that. You know, eight catches for seventy yards to me is a lot better than three catches for a hundred. Depending on you know if, he, if it was a broken play or if he juked four people out of their shoes, obviously. You know, things change. It's not all in a vacuum, but, you know, I, I'd much rather see target share, especially to see where he is in this offense. Is he going to get more targets than Trey McBride at the end of 2024? I don't know why that's like, a oh, of course he will. We don't know. So that's why TBD on wide receiver. That was way longer than I wanted to go. Uh, position groups that are the weakest, pass rush. And I know that if it's a 3-4 base or 4-3 base, if, if he switches it up, in a 3-4 base, let's just say pass rush, okay? Because you've got your linebackers. I don't know if it'd be Ojolari hand in the dirt, if he's going to be standing up uh, off the edge, whatever it is. Darius Robinson can play inside and outside defensive line. Like, I'm just saying the pass rush as an entity. They don't have a star pass rusher on this team. They don't have a proven above average pass rusher on this team. It's not... They don't have one that's close. This could be B.J. Ojolari's coming out party. A Darius Robinson could come in and be a wrecker right away. God, watch some tape on him. It is just. He's like Jadavian Clowney light, man. I mean, not, not exactly the same player, but, I mean, he's got some speed off the line. Darius Robinson does. And he hits really hard. And it's awesome. Uh, Zayvon Collins, I, I, I don't know. Do, do you know who Zayvon Collins is? I mean, is, is he a guy that's going to take that step that, that we've been waiting for? It's his second year playing outside. Okay, fine. How many excuses? Let's see if this, like, if this, and it's not, that's not a knock on him, okay? He's had a tough run. He's had an Asan Reddick run here. So hopefully, like, are you kidding me? Hopefully, Zeman Collins can figure it out with his second year under Nick Rawls and a better supporting cast around him, both in the cornerback room um, and, and defensive line to where it make his job a little bit easier. It'd be fantastic. You kidding me? That'd be a diamond in the rough that they have on the roster already. Everybody loves him. He just hasn't played very well. What a what a what an absolute break in the Arizona Cardinals' direction favorably if Zayvon Collins gets it figured out in uh, in 2024. Would be unbelievable for roster building. They would check a box. They wouldn't have to draft a pass rusher uh, at the top of the 2024. They might have to anyways. But it, it's a weakness though. Defensive line still a weakness. We don't know. Bilal Nichols and Justin Jones are rotational pieces. Okay. And we'll see. There's a lot of we'll sees. We'll see if LJ Collier off the, you know, playing D end can play meaningful football. We'll see if Dante Stills in the middle can play meaningful football. But that is the, that's probably the weakest position still. And it takes a while to rebuild it when, it was pretty much devoid of talent. The, pass, the Cardinals didn't have a pass rush for the last couple months of last season. It's like you're starting from the bottom. Are we here? I don't know. It's the only Drake reference I know. I don't listen to Drake. Um, and then the cornerback room. 
I can't put this in TBD because everybody's young. Sean Murphy Bunting is the elder statesman. He's what, like 25? Please hold. He's 26. He'll be 27 when the season starts. So he's the elder statesman of the group. You got Garrett Williams. You got Max Melton. You got Elijah Jones. You got a bunch of young, young corners that listen. If this works, hold on to your hats. Like, say out of out of Rabbit from Safety, Max Melton, Elijah Jones, Garrett Williams. Out of those four, if three of those players, if three of those guys pop. And the Cardinals have over $90 million to spend next offseason on a pass rusher, maybe. And this offense reaches new heights. This could get really good really fast. But, slash and, we need to see it first. So at this point, with Sean Murphy Bunting, who's on his third team in five years, and Garrett Williams, who missed a large portion of last season, recovering from an ACL injury he suffered at Syracuse, and two rookies who were starting – against the teams that they're playing against, the wide receivers they're playing against. Still a weakness until we see it. I think, you know, and this, this is rough right now. Like it, it, like a rough draft. There's a lot more to be seen. There's not a lot of, we don't have a lot of film on these young guys in Arizona Cardinals uniform. So we'll see what happens. It's going to be fun. Alex Sensu, Locked on Cardinals. Remember, without you, there is no me. I'll talk to you tomorrow.